We can follow the same basic process for our remote sites. As with the main office, we need subnets for workstations and voice. We'll also plan ahead and add Wi-Fi here too. There are only five users per site, so that's five workstations and five phones. Let's assume around 20 wireless devices for the Wi-Fi network. Being a retail outlet, there may be more point of sale terminals or other devices, so let's add these to the workstation count too. Now we've got that done, we can select a main network for each site. I'm going to use 172.17.00/16 for site A and 172.18.00/16 for site B. Now isn't that overkill once again for such a small site? Yeah, definitely. It is definitely overkill. But we have plenty of private IP space available to us and we're not using much for a small company like this. So even though it's overkill, it makes it easier on us. Anything starting with 172.17 is site A. Anything starting with 172.18 is site B. So with a small amount of hosts, we could use very small subnets, but it's better if we match the main office. Yes, it's far more than we need, but using the same subnetting scheme at each site helps to keep things organized. I'm only showing site A in the table here, but I'm sure you get the idea. The same can apply to VLANs as well. The same scheme makes it easier on us later. But hang on, haven't I said a few times that we should only have one subnet per VLAN? Aren't we breaking the rules by reusing VLANs 5, 10 and 20 at the main office as well as at the two remote sites? That's true. Keep this in mind because I'm going to come back to that later. The switches at branch offices are layer two only. This means that the router has to be the default gateway. To achieve this, we configure a trunk link between the router and switch. The router is then in a router on a stick topology. As with the main office, the router has the dot one IP address assigned to each subnet. The workstations and phones use this as their default gateway. The phones and workstations get their IP addresses from DHCP. We have two options. One is to configure the local router as a DHCP server. The other is to configure it as a DHCP helper, just as we did in the main office. I prefer the DHCP helper option. I find it simpler in most cases to manage the DHCP scopes from one place. It also makes it easier for help desk staff to assist when needed, as most of them seem to have more server than networking training. The downside to this approach is if the remote offices lost their connection to the main office. In that case, clients wouldn't be able to renew or request new DHCP leases.